Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mobile DevOps Summit. Um, let me introduce myself first. Um, my name is Mustafa. I'm a mobile principal engineer at Backbase in Amsterdam and leading the mobile teams of my department. Um, I have 12 years of experience in software and working on both platforms for iOS and Android. Um, in this session, we will be talking about the mobile CICD pipelines on Bitrise and sharing the workflows. At first, the basic con concepts will be explained. Then I will try to show some uh, possible scenarios and solution for it. Hopefully, uh, it'll be inspiring. Of course, the first question is uh, about CICD. What is it? Uh, most of you already know about CICD. And CICD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous de Delivery or Development uh, Deployment, you can say. Um, it is an automated process. And let's assume uh, you have developed a feature. CICD should take care of the whole process, like planning the integration and delivery, building, uh, the testing the, uh, the pipelines or the repository, also the delivering. And when you merge a pull request, this can trigger the whole process. So basically, this is how CICD works. You have a plan called build phases, then test, then deliver, then release. So we call this basically CI/CD. Um, there are a bunch of CI/CD tools out there uh, to manage this pro uh, process, like Jenkins, Bitrise, uh, Bamboo, uh, GitHub Actions, AppCircle. Um, in our teams, we have started with Jenkins on our servers, mobile, backend, frontend. Most of the teams have their servers. And from the mobile perspective, we set up uh, Mac, macOS servers, and use the Jenkins agent. So, but in times, in a, in a time, teams got grow and still growing, right? So we have new products, new SDKs, new apps. That means uh, new, new, new pipelines, new servers in parallel. And each department had their own server, and they were maintaining it. And at the time, we saw that this is cost a lot and maintaining the server, creating the software, sometimes connection issues. Um, so the aging is not available or busy. So that means you need to wait and this is blocking you. Um, also, you need to deal with the environment setup, right? Right. So the upgrading the JDK Java development kit, Xcode and operating system. Um, sometimes you feel out of control and you need to uh, dedicate the teams to do these stuff. Then we find our, ourselves in finding, uh, searching in cloud CI/CD because uh, we can move all of our pipelines to cloud and it will be uh, easy to maintain from our side. There were uh, lots of candidates. We decided on Bitrise. Then we started moving our pipelines to Bitrise. Um, why third-party vendor for CI/CD? Um, especially these maintenance issues that I mentioned. And if uh, if there's a new Xcode version from Apple, let's say. Uh, in one click, you can upgrade your pipeline with the latest Xcode. So you don't wait to install time because uh, the vendor already providing this for you. And in one click, you need to select, that's it. And this is not only for Bitrise uh, because most of the same for the other uh, vendors like GitHub Actions, AppCircle, all of them doing this. And the second thing is you don't need to think about the scalability. Uh, you can add all pipelines, uh, for your old teams, it will run in parallel and you don't need to think about availability of the server. And there are more reasons, but yeah, these are the top priorities. Now, um, let's see how to create a standard workflow on Bitrise. Basically, uh, when you create an application on Bitrise, it will connect your repository, then uh, you will define your workflow with steps. It's actually quite straightforward. You will just follow the UI directions for the creating the app perspective. And the second part is after the creating the apps, you need to create a workflow. So when you build uh, an app, uh, your app is ready. You need to add these workflows like build workflow, release workflow based on the uh, required tasks. You need to uh, create your workflow. In this case, in this uh, example, we have build workflow. And the next thing is, when you complete your workflow, there will be steps for your individual workflow. Uh, add your steps, do this step, do this step based on your needs in that workflow. For instance, um, from 
Android perspective, there are lots of steps based on the project type, right? So Gradle mm -hmm. Runner or deploying the APK uh, for iOS, uh, running the Xcode build, signing the app. So there are most of steps inside of this steps list or uh, the generic steps like running the secret custom scripts or adding the select notifications or um, Amazon AWS. Besides that, there's a chance to chain the workflows like run uh, prepare workflow just before the build workflow or you can do uh, on prepare what you can do on prepare. Uh, you can set up your environment, you can set up your proxy, uh, pull your cache based on your project maybe. Uh, and just for the main uh, main workflow, you can run this. Also, the right after the main flow uh, completes, you can say, hey, notify uh, select channel or send an email or do something, uh, notify the repository. So uh, you can chain the workflows in this case. This is quite straightforward. And uh, you can do this directly on web UI or directly in a YAML file. And the next thing is um, one to end scalability. So uh, your products getting grow and you will have new SDK, new frameworks, new apps, uh, helper tools uh, you will you'll distribute, right? So uh, you will have new members in your team, your department gonna grow and the uh, new teams will be there. That means more pipelines and uh, more pipelines are on the way. Um, the first thing you do, create an app on Bitrise or on your CICD tool because these topics are actually uh, applicable for all CI/CD tools. Um, copy your workflow for the new pipeline, and that's it, because you already have a structure. Uh, you are going to create a new application or new pipeline, and you will just copy and paste from the previous structure, because most of the time, the steps are the same. If you are releasing an app through Fastlane or something, uh, that means uh, releasing is the same, but the parameters are different. You will just change the parameters or you are releasing an SDK. Uh, building is the same, releasing is the same, triggering the test is the same. The only difference is platform like iOS and Android and the project parameters like name, repo, URL, right? And that means just copy and paste and change the necessary places in, and your pipeline will be ready in five minutes. Your uh, product manager going to like this or your PO going to like this because it is a simple task, your pipeline will be ready and you will just use them in five minutes. But the problem actually starts here. Your teams are growing and you have uh, new frameworks, apps, you have more pipelines. Let's assume you have 10 pipelines and you created them easily, like I just like explained, like copy and paste, that's it. Uh, but what if there is a bug on your pipeline or you need to add a new step? additional step right after build workflow, like sending a notification to the Slack, like UI tests are failed or uh, your pipeline runs successfully. So you, you want to notificate, you not to create a notification. That means adding a step individually, 10 pipelines, like one by one. What, do you have, what if you have more like 20 or 40 pipelines? Um, this becomes a time consuming task because um, you need to modify your pipelines one by one. And we had this issue actually. Uh, in my team, we have more than 40 pipelines. And in my department, we have eight more teams. They have their own pipelines, own applications, own frameworks. So that means uh, your pipeline is getting doubled in a time. So we said, let's share this Bitrise YAML file and use this across the pipelines, across the teams, if it's common. Um, even if, if the projects are different, the task is the same. Build process is the same, release is the same, or um, running the test suite is the same. Only the difference is changing the, uh, changing the parameters. So all you need to uh, find out is, um, what is the common workflow? Because in our case, um, we separated plus first, iOS and Android. Then we separated project type like app and library, uh, either if it's deployable to App Center, App Store, or a library that can be shared uh, repository like a JFrog. Um, here, you are seeing a sample 
uh, build step under the build workflow. And this bitrise.yaml file can be shared, right? So what you can do is actually, uh, after the separating the YAML files, you can move them under a Git repository. Uh, it is quite simple process. Uh, you will just push this under a separate repository. Uh, just you need to do is actually uh, create the folder structures on your needs. But the next question is, how are we going to reach them? Because uh, we separated our pipelines, we moved it to uh, remote, then my individual repository should reach it. Actually, this is also a simple git clone uh, step on Bitrise. Just before the main workflow that you want to run, uh, we are cloning the shared Bitrise step under prepare step. That prepare step actually runs before the build workflow. So we are adding a script step. And in that script step, we are just cloning the repository, git clone, then SSH link. That's it. And the next thing is, so we have the repository cloned. Uh, how we are going to run that workflow that I cloned from the remote git. So we have a handy step in uh, Bitrise that runs workflow by name, also the path. Simply, we are pointing the file, and then we are giving the name. Uh, in this GIF, you are seeing that I'm adding the run, Bitrise run step and giving the workflow ID, which is built in our case. Then Bitrise YAML path. And in the path, you will see there is a folder, Bitrise, shared Bitrise, which is Git repository uh, path, Git, Git repository folder, then my Bitrise YAML file. So based on your folder structure, you can modify this. And then uh, Bitrise run will run the build from remote. And this is the behind the scenes. When you add a step from uh, web UI, it will modify the YAML file and it will add this Bitrise run under steps. And you will see the inputs. Um, Bitrise config path, path is actually shared Bitrise slash uh, Bitrise YAML. Please note that um, this uh, shared pipeline on Git, right? So that means that should be restrictions on Bitrise, uh, on branch. Uh, there should be some pull requests. If, if someone wants to add new change, it should be reviewed by some developers. That should, it should be well tested, etc. Because it is shared and it will affect all the pipelines, right? Now we got rid of the copying the entire flow, like copying, pasting, and also the also, we fixed the bottleneck of the maintenance and improvement, and we shared the workflows between the pipelines. That's it. And here's the benefit. Um, if you run a bug, if you find a bug uh, in your pipeline for some reason, uh, when you fix it, it will affect all of your 40 pipelines. And let's say you want to add a new step. Let's say notify the Slack channels. Uh, right after the UI test successful or your build successful, uh, then it will notify and you need to add a step. So you will just modify this shared step and it will be added to all of your 40 pipelines. We can move this one more step forward. So what if you can create a workflow that creates a workflow? So within three steps, um, you can create your apps on Bitrise and include your desired workflows. So the three steps are register your app to Bitrise, then set your SSH keys, then finalize it. So currently uh, on screen, you are seeing that um, there is a curl request in the, in, the, in the screen. So this curl is actually sent to Bitrise. Of course, you need to provide some parameters. So the, the first item is actually creating the parameters. And uh, there is a git repo URL parameter in the first line. So you need to provide this. This is your repository. And the second line actually handles the curl request, which is post. And there will be response from that curl request. After that, you need to get your application select because there will be a response from the GitHub. And you need to map this in your Bitrise pipeline. 
then Bitrise will say, this is your identification number on your pipeline. So we call this AppSlack. And the last line uh, saves, saves this under environment variables because we will reach this application Slack later on. And the next step is setting the SSH keys because you need to authorize your uh, pipeline to repository against your repository. So you need to provide your SSH keys. Then this is another curl, curl post request to Bitrise. So Bitrise pipeline will be authorized. And the last step is finalizing your application. Um, this is also another curl request. Um, this request uh, finalize your project based on your application Slack and your platform. So um, based on your project, you can provide the different parameters like Android project and iOS project. For instance, if it's an iOS project, you can say my stack should use Xcode 14 or I will run my Android uh, under Linux Docker Android. So you can provide these parameters. And in the second line, we are checking the platform. Based on the platform, we are using the necessary parameters. This platform part is uh, uh, a one variable. So you can uh, provide this based on your URL, uh, based on your URL naming convention, if it's an Android project or iOS project. And the last part is running this curl. So, which means when you have a new repository, uh, you can you can uh, run a simple bash script that creates your pipeline and run, uh, runs the workflows based on the standards. Uh, build, test, deliver will be ready in the very first minute. So these are the topics that I wanted to mention. Thanks for. If you have any questions, please provide your questions and I will try to answer all of them. Um, there is one 